big challenge, probably an unknown challenge in what's coming for us uh, in France. It's our last week together, obviously with a trophy uh, to play for. So, exciting week, eh? Exciting week, proper exciting week. And what I, what, I want, what I want to see from us boys is a proper buzz around the place to see how much we could possibly get out of ourselves. So the World Cup last year were red-hot favourites. We didn't cope with it, did we? We didn't approach the week with an endeavour and a desire to want to get better. So we need to go to training looking to improve. How can you improve your game? How can you add more to the team this week? It's the final week, so it's always a little bit different. Uh, it's always a good learning week. Um, I think we've, we've uh, matured a lot from the World Cup final and try to put some of those learnings into practice this week. Well, our defence allows us to attack. Uh, you know, as soon as the opposition get the ball, we want to get the ball back quickly as we can, and we've really worked on the speed at which our line moves. So that's something that's progressed during the tournament. The players have done a hell of a lot. You know, John Mitchell leads it, but with with Owen, they work very hard at creating the right attitude. Yeah, we've got a fairly simple system. We've made a few alterations during the Six Nations, but it's more about the attitude of working together, working hard to get the ball back. Finals are always won by the best defensive team. Um, so we need to make sure we defend better than we have all tournament. I think the foundation of most defensive efforts and, and most defences is, is probably a combination of sort of working hard, um, and also you know, the sort of relationships and the, the connections you have with other people. So it's definitely for the players and, and for the staff, I think it's one of the most rewarding. I think that, that ability to use, use a defence as an aggressive sort of weapon is, is, is huge. It's certainly been an integral part of our campaign so far. Um, I think it's something we've got a lot of energy out of. I think it takes a lot of energy out of another team as well. If, you, if, you, if you've got the ball and you can't go anywhere with it, it's quite demoralising. It's a deep, deep love. And you know, with every love and this relationship developing, you know, sometimes it's very good, sometimes it's not so good, but most of the time it's very good. And I think why I love it so much is it's the ability to get the ball back. And I think there's so many different ways to kind of get it back, whether it's you know, different bits of line speed from the inside or things people don't see or you know, a, a real kick sprint where you can put some pressure on you. You might not be close, but they can feel you and then you get the ball back in a better position. Uh, it's going to sound bad, but it's almost like a you know spring of spaniel chasing after a ball. I guess I guess that's the best way to put it. You know, the, they're always going to chuck the ball around, and the spring is always going to be excited to see it. So, Mitch has been brilliant. Um, the boys love him because I think he, I think what he's done, from my point of view, what he's done really well is sort of empower lads to to take charge of it a little bit and take ownership of the defence, which I think ultimately gives you a better outcome because it's such a it's such a um, an effort-driven area of the game, and it's such a such a collective sort of. You have to be in it together um, to get good outcomes. I think by giving that sort of responsibility in many ways to the players and the opportunity to 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 affect our, our defence to the players, I think it it shows a massive amount of trust on his part, and, and also I think it gets really good outcomes and, and really good buy-in from the lads. I guess this campaign we've looked more for at our at our effort. Um, you know, like in our tackle reload um, and, and more importantly our attitude and our, 
in our last 22 metres. Um, and then obviously every opposition come with different strengths and, and different ways to attack off, off nine to, to win momentum. Uh, then obviously you've got sides that play a bit wider and, um, and then you've got sides that, uh, that enjoy kick space as well. And you've got sides that, are, that can go to all uh, areas of space like, you know, like the French um, have the ability to do so. At the end of the day, uh, defence is very much uh, situational. In other words, what's in front of you, um, what's uh, what's even further away from you, so that you can anticipate what, what's next. Ultimately, um, you know the great thing about defence is that you're always going to need it because you're not guaranteed that attack is always going to flow, get its rhythm, and, and and be able to undo the opposition. And so when you get into that arm wrestle and you have like a, a chaotic evening or a or you just for some reason are not not on it with the, with the attack, then you then you need your defence every week, and um, this is what this group is capable of. Um, I think they're starting to recognise recognise that, um, and ultimately yeah, that's why it's it's uh, really important to us. Listen, lads, Slady, Will, just take a take a look at what team you're on. Just going to go out here just for. a so we'll walk through a couple of little scenarios, okay? So just take a, take a look here and we'll, we'll move out here. I'll see you out here. Yes, mate. At the end of the day, it's, um, it's owned by the whole. Um, it's contributed uh, to by the whole. Um, and then it's just up to me to make sure that you use a, a whole lot of different mediums, I guess, uh, uh, to try and create um, some variety and not allow it to become boring. Like we've been saying every week, everyone's involved in defending all the time. All 15 of us at all times are involved. Because you get an outcome like this, you get more of momentum, that's them from the line. See how everyone comes into play now, they're all, they all want the ball, they want to move the ball wide, they want to offload, they want to play on the front foot. That's where they come to life. We need to be ready when they do. When they do come with that, when they, when they fall back into trying to play, when they fall back into trying to get momentum, we need to be ready. Part of uh, England's DNA, isn't it? That we're, that we're very, very brutal around um, around the defensive area, particularly around that sort of the rook area. Uh, so to to assist in that, we've got to make sure the re players are recovered properly, uh, and they, they feel energised, and they have the right mindset. We make sure, from an SNC point of view, that our boys are uh, completely recovered and actually feel like going out and uh, and being brutal around defence. We have one really big session a week. Which is, uh, which is our main game training session. So following that session and following uh, the following day, the, there's a huge emphasis around recovery. And not just getting the boys ju just to recover, but also just really dialing down on what, what suits them uh, and what works for them and what they need on that day. On the recovery days, we do like a bit of a, a circuit really, if you like. So um, I'm sure if you ask them, it, they'd probably say it doesn't look anything like uh, a traditional recovery. The idea is there is that we're getting them moving again and we're getting the blood flowing and, and actually we're, we're creating a bit of lactic acid within the recovery which helps the recovery process. Woo! Woo! And then down the other end of the scale you know you've got the uh, the wingers, the fast guys, the fast twitch guys so um, we try and give them a lot of heat uh, therapy and therapies and recovery modalities that will really dial their system down because they're quite high tone, fast, uh, quick athletes. For instance, we have, uh, we have the infrared um, room this time. In, in a nutshell, it's basically what's happening. It's allowing the, the cells of the body to get, have more energy. So they rejuvenate and repair and grow quicker than perhaps they would at a normal rate. So the big benefit that the boys are saying, they're doing it at night and they're sleeping really well and the sleep, they're having deep sleep uh, and recovering well. And as we know, the sleep's the number one recovery. So uh, we're, we're just assisting in that, in that sleeping process as well by getting the boys to go through that. As a team, we believe that the closer you are off the field, the better that you're gonna be on it. And one of our key values is togetherness. And that's not just togetherness as a whole, it's also as individuals. Um, and there are, 
couple of individuals who have developed some pretty interesting relationships, ones that you probably wouldn't guess. Oli Lawrence and Mako Vanapola, they've developed a good relationship uh, basically over who's better at FIFA. I don't know exactly who is better, but they both back themselves massively. Humility isn't a value of theirs when it comes to FIFA. They're both incredibly arrogant. What's the key for two? Oh, it's been a tough day in the office. Right, sit back, everyone. Please. It's nice to see sort of Will Stewart and Jack Willis back together. Uh, obviously, they knew each other from the Wasp Academy. No, I'm happy with that. Right. You know, the more that I know, you know, what Ben, what makes Ben Young tick, what makes George Ford tick, what makes Carl Sinclair tick, it makes the conversations flow a lot easier. They're not, you know, in the height of the moment, they're not always nice and calm. Sometimes they can be quite frantic. Um, but I think fundamentally, if you know where it's coming from, you know the person that, it, that it's coming from, then you're able to sort of take the message and move forward. You know, you see it when, when it comes to our defence. Um, you know, that's something where we massively talk about our togetherness and working hard for each other. But then also, you know, when it gets tough and we have to fight for each other, you know, a team makes a line break, they get into our 22. That's when times get really hard and that's when that you, you know, how quickly you can get off the floor. All the things that require no talent become, you know, massively applicable there. So um, it's an opportunity for you to show how much this team means for you and how much you care about the people either side of you. We're at our best when we're aggressive, eh? when we're aggressive and we're at teams constantly, which ties into what we just said. But when we're talking about being aggressive in everything that we're doing, it's, it's a together thing, it's not an individual thing. Of course you're going to be aggressive in, individually in the tackle, of course you're going to be aggressive individually in the carry. It's, a, it's an aggressive togetherness, you talk about the, the line speed that we're going to bring. It's knowing that your teammates have got are with you and you're all going to be aggressive together so we're so much in control that we're all going to get them. That's when we're at our best.
patience battle. We get that end of the field and we're ultra disciplined. Ultra disciplined. We'll get our opportunities. Okay? Let's keep going. Let's keep going. That that game for me it just showed resilience. We weren't at our best. We didn't we didn't we didn't you know play the game exactly how we wanted it, but we stuck at it. It shows the character. It shows what we're building. If this was us a year ago, we probably wouldn't have would have, would have lost that game. But we showed resilience, funny. So flipping out. Well done. Another trophy, yeah. Come down to it today, I thought our attitude was brilliant in that second half. I thought our attitude uh, when we when the pressure came on, I thought it built throughout that second half and we got better and better and better. And uh, when it counted boys I thought you was brilliant. Um, I'm sorry it took so long. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you did you did honestly you did enough to, you did enough to win. You did enough to win three games though, so uh, I'm sorry but, but usually in that situation it's hard to get it back. Like we found that in South Africa in the World Cup final. Exactly the same. The great thing is we've learned. We've learned how to fight through that. Because the second half, there was no doubt there was only one team going to win that game. And that was us. Now we had to get the points. But we did that. And as the game got longer, who got stronger? We did. Right. This is true. This is true. I hope you enjoyed the, the next level. We try to give you an insight in the workings of the team. You know, our fans are our most important people and, and to give you this opportunity to look inside the team is something that uh, we enjoy doing. So thank you for your support and I'm sure the next series is going to be even better. Perfect. Thank you, mate.